Okay, so now if we look at what's in our set, I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the clip view a bit. And I don't need to see the inputs and outputs or the sends and returns right now. So let's go ahead and hide all that. So I have two different MIDI clips here. And I guess I'll expand this a little bit more. So if we look at our MIDI clips, I have one that I recorded in real time and it's a little bit sloppy, okay? So it's not really properly quantized. Notes don't fall right on the beat grid. And if I play it, it sounds a little sloppy. On the other hand, we have the second clip where I drew everything in using the draw mode and everything's locked right on the beat. And that's cool, but you know, this might be a little bit too stiff. Although it's kind of cool, but it's nice to be able to introduce some timing variation and changes. So let's look at correcting the timing of the first clip by using quantization and then also some creative ways to make the timing a bit more loose on the second clip. All right, so going to the first clip here. Now, when we're talking about quantization, we talked about this with the clip launch quantization, and ultimately what you're doing is correcting the timing of the notes. That's what we do by quantizing. Now, if I go into the edit menu, I have a couple different things related to quantize. We have quantize and quantize settings. Now, these are both grayed out because we haven't selected any notes to quantize. So if I put my focus down here on the clip, if I don't select any notes, it's gonna quantize everything inside that clip. If I only select certain notes, I can quantize just those notes without quantizing everything else, which could be kind of cool. So first, let's go ahead and look at our quantize settings, which can be found by hitting Shift Command U or in the edit menu. Now, every time you choose to quantize, it's gonna use the same quantize settings. So you're gonna to wanna to adjust these first. Typically, I'm gonna to quantize to 16th notes. I typically will just adjust the notes start. I don't necessarily need to quantize the end of the notes, but obviously this is done to taste. And the amount. Now this is nice because you can correct the timing of your notes without making it 100% quantized, which sometimes can end up sounding a little bit too stiff. So let's play the beat again, and then I'm gonna quantize it so we can hear the difference by quantizing it at 100%. And that's the wrong clip, so let's go ahead and play the right one. I actually don't mind the wonkiness of this, but again, we're gonna quantize it so we can hear the difference. Edit, my quantize settings. So we're gonna quantize this at 100%, 16th notes. So now the timing is perfect, everything's perfectly on the grid, but it just feels a little bit too stiff to me. So let's go ahead and undo that, Command Z. And let's try to quantize this to something less than 100%. So this time I'm gonna to go to uh, my quantize settings by using the shortcut Shift Command U. And let's quantize this at maybe 70%. Let's hear the result of that. Okay, that actually is pretty interesting. Now I noticed one thing is that there's this kick is being triggered twice at the very end of the clip and also at the beginning of the clip. I probably don't want that to happen. I'll just get rid of this one. And if you look, this hi-hat and that snare, they're still happening a little bit ahead of the 16th note here. And you can see they're both not even quantized by the same amount. So reducing the quantization percentage can give you some more natural sounding results uh, while still correcting the timing of the majority of the notes. Now let's step back again. I'm gonna unquantize all this stuff. And like I said, we don't have to quantize every single note. So let's say maybe I only wanna quantize the snares. In fact, maybe I only wanna quantize the snare that hits on the second and fourth beat. I'm gonna select that snare. I'm gonna go ahead and hold shift and select that snare. So now only these two snares have been selected. I want to quantize these. The shortcut, once we've already set our quantize settings, is Command U. But let me go back to the quantize settings. I think I want to quantize both of those snares by 100%, but nothing else. Let's hear the result. See, another nice little secret is that sometimes if the snares are on beat, or just the snare hits on the second and fourth beat, everything else can be a little bit off, and the snare is the thing that keeps the timing right. 
Sometimes it's a matter of just having a kick drum that falls right on the one of every single bar, and then everything else can be totally off. But having that kick as your anchor basically establishes the timing and the tempo and the feel for the beat. So don't feel like everything has to be perfectly quantized. Now let's look at this from a different perspective. We're gonna go down to our second clip, the one where everything is perfectly quantized. Let's go ahead and play this. Now, sometimes it's nice to be able to have things a little bit behind the beat or ever so slightly off. If we right click inside of the uh, clip here, we have options for our grid. An adaptive grid means that the further in or out you zoom, the resolution for the grid is gonna change. With a fixed grid, it doesn't matter how far in or out you zoom, the uh, clip resolution, the grid resolution is always gonna be the same. But you can also just turn the grid off. Now, if we do that, I can move these notes freely wherever I want. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that we can also deactivate notes by selecting them and simply pressing zero. So I've deactivated that hi-hat. I'm gonna deactivate this hi-hat. And actually, no, we'll leave that one there. And I'm gonna deactivate this hi-hat. I'm deactivating the hi-hats that hit at the same time as the snare. And in fact, I'm gonna deactivate every hi-hat that hits at the same time as another sound. Right, and let's see, let's deactivate this last one as well. Oh no, maybe that one. There we go. All right, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take these snares and just move them slightly behind the beat. I'm gonna zoom in some, so I don't have a grid that I'm stuck with, so just a little bit behind the beat. And then I'll move this last kick as well. So by doing that, I'm introducing our own little unique sort of swing or rhythm. The first kick lands right on the one, but this snare is a little bit behind the beat. This snare is behind the beat. The kick after it's a little bit behind the beat. So it's gonna make it feel like we're kind of approaching the one a bit faster. Normally you're expecting this snare to be on this line. This kick would be a little bit earlier, which is gonna give us more space between the last kick and the first kick. By moving these back some, we create less space here, so it feels like the one comes a little bit faster than normal. So it just influences the way that you move your body to the beat and how you nod your head to it. So again, don't always feel like everything has to be perfectly timed. Sometimes those uh, you know little timing variations and uh, the imperfections are what make the music sound so cool and so unique. If you think about abandoned musicians, again, you're not talking about robots. Everyone has their own unique sort of timing and feeling, and the combination of all that makes the groove a lot stronger and more natural. So just keep these things in mind. Now, before I finish off, one more thing I wanna talk about is another velocity trick that can be really, really helpful. Let's say maybe I wanna ramp up the velocity on a series of snares or hi-hats or whatever the MIDI notes are. I'm gonna highlight these hi-hats here. And when I highlight these, the velocity for those hi-hats has also been highlighted as well. Now what I would like to do is make it so that I can have the velocity of these hi-hats gradually ramp up until we get to that snare. Now I could select each one of these individually and just kinda of draw a little staircase pattern, but this is, very cool feature in Ableton Live. If I go down here where the velocity poles are and I hold command and I click and hold with my mouse, I can draw a little dotted line here. And when I let go, the velocity of the highlighted notes is gonna follow suit. Boom, very cool. Now this is extremely useful if you wanna do a snare roll, if you're doing some sort of buildup, uh, which is a very you know EDM-ish kind of thing to do. I don't like the term EDM, but it's used a lot. So I think when I say that, you know what I'm talking about. And if you wanna do the typical snare buildup, this is a very easy way to do it, where you can just put the snare in every you know quarter note, eighth note, 16th note, and then just gradually build the velocity by selecting the snares in the clip, holding command, click, and then drag, make a nice little line like that. 
One more thing to touch on before we leave here is that it's very easy to move notes around uh, when you're inside of a mini clip. Let me go ahead and turn my grid back on, make it a 16th note grid again. And let's say maybe I want the first note, instead of being a hi-hat that I've deactivated, maybe I want this to be a, uh, do I have a crash symbol in here? I do. Got that little symbol there. So maybe I want to start with that. All I did is I just select the note and use my up and down arrows to move it to the appropriate lane with the sound that I want. If I want this to hit a little bit later, simply move it left and right to the point in the clip that I want it to be. If I want multiple symbols to play with the note selected, I can simply just duplicate it. So it's very easy to work in this way. Uh, so don't be discouraged if you don't have a MIDI controller. It's actually quite easy to program these clips uh, without any sort of MIDI controller. And now I've just activated that note by pressing zero. Now it's deactivated. So let's hear our new little clip. The velocity for this is kind of loud. So I'm gonna lower the velocity, but instead of grabbing this, I'm gonna hover my mouse over the clip, hold command, and click and just drag down. There we go. And at this point, if I feel like I move these notes back too far, I can always go back to my quantize settings and quantize this, but not at 100%. Okay, last but not least, since we're talking about quantization, if I wanna record something in real time and don't wanna worry about quantizing it after the fact, I always have the option in my edit menu to turn on record quantization, which is here. Typically, I have this on and set to 16th notes. So if I enable this and I go to another clip slot, let's go ahead and record something different and this time, You'll notice that when I'm done, everything's gonna be quantized as I record. So. It's pretty impressive because I didn't have my metronome on. <laughs> but now that that's recorded, I can record some other stuff and you'll hear everything gets quantized. Last thing I recorded was the hi-hats. I can easily bring the velocity for all of those down now because they were all selected since it's the last thing I recorded. So again, this is helpful if you wanna just bang out ideas really quickly without worrying about correcting the timing of everything. Uh, that way you can capture stuff and have it still sound on beat. Sometimes if things are too off beat, it can be a little bit jarring. So now we have a few different MIDI clips uh, with a few different variations on our little beat. Uh, let's see what else we can do with these clips. Thank you. 